Hi and welcome to History Legends. In the past few days, in the past few weeks, I've been binge watching all of Bald and Bankrupt's videos I haven't seen already. One of my favorite YouTubers ever. But talking about that, there's something strange I noticed. In December 2019, he goes to Azerbaijan, meets up with some refugees from Nagorno-Karabakh, and a couple months later, there's a war there in Nagorno-Karabakh. Then he went to the Russo-Ukrainian border on February 23rd, 2022, and the day after, the Russian army marched in. Then he went to Syria in April 22, and a couple months later, fighting restarted north of Aleppo. In May 2022, he goes to Uzbekistan, and now there's a massive uprising in Karakal, Pakistan. He even went back to the UK, and now the government is in crisis. Look, it might just be a massive coincidence. However, that's not today's topic. What I actually wanted to show you was one of his videos where he went to the Czech Republic. And this is what he found. We need to stop at that war memorial. Come on, let's check out a Czech war memorial. Pull up, please, Linczyk. Well, as we can see here in the old village of Britsby is a war memorial for the First World War, 1914-1918. Of course, wow, just looking at the names here. For some reason, I got so intrigued by this war memorial, by all the names inscribed on it. I kept telling myself, what is the story of these Czech soldiers from the village of Britsby? Did they fight for the Habsburg monarchy, for Austria-Hungary, or were they part of the famous Czechoslovak legion? Overall, what did it feel like to be a Czech soldier during World War I? And this is what you'll discover today. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. If you've heard of Raid, you know it's got a ton of champions, over 600 now. But it also got an insane variety of bosses. Honestly, since I'm a gaming noob and I like history, I pick Minotaur. Luckily, the Minotaur is one of Raid's simplest bosses. The best thing you can do is just overwhelm him with powerful buffs and debuffs and just beat him to unconsciousness. Perfect for new players. And what's new in Raid? Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. But wait, there's more! You can get your hands on the amazing Delina, a brand new legendary champion from the High Elves faction. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for 7 days between now and July 28th, and you'll get Delina for free. That's it, super easy. All new players, listen up. Once you're in game, just enter the promo code MYDELINA to get your hands on absolutely everything. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero Delina to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. Honestly, this is the best time to get started with Raid. And if you click my link in the description below or scan my QR code on the screen, you'll get a unique bonus worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Rector Drop, 200,000 silver, one energy refill and one XP boost and one Ancient Shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. If you want to get all this, make sure to click the link in the description and enter promo code MYDELINA. Primary information. The okay, first thing I did, the most obvious, was to Google Translate what was written on the memorial. The inscription says, in memory of the fallen and dead soldiers 1914-1918. As you know, 1914-1918 is World War I, the Great War. There are 17 names inscribed on the memorial. And not surprisingly, 13 out of the 17 were in their 20s, with the youngest at 20 years old and the oldest at 53. The largest cluster ranges from 22 to 26 years old. Overall, the average age of death was 28, which is pretty similar to the average age of death of British soldiers during the Great War at 27. But this doesn't help us identify who these guys were. Austrian archives. We know that the majority of Czech soldiers fought for Austria-Hungary. So the answer might lie somewhere in Vienna. The easiest was to look for these Czech soldiers in Austrian World War I casualty archives. Honestly, I thought it was going to be a walk in the park. Get the name of the village, input it in, and over, we get them all. However, I didn't even know how to write the name of the village. I tried to replay the clip multiple times, but that didn't help much. What literally saved me was this guy in the comment section that said that the village was called Britsvi, which is located just east of Prague. Okay, we got the village Walk in the Park Part 2. Just input village of birth as Britsvi, and it would just list all of them. 
no results found. Come on. At that moment, I was like, can I even keep going with this video? I can't even start the research. I don't know anything about these guys. I, I entered the rabbit hole and <laughs> in the end, I would spend so many hours on this with barely any information. I had no other choice but to input every name in the database individually. This is when knowing the German language comes in pretty handy. Es ist wirklich ein fantastisches Gefühl in Nordamerika zu sein und Deutsch zu reden. After a lot of trial and error, I finally got my first hit. Stepan Josef. Status tot. Confirmed KIA. Date of death, the 25th of July 1916. Since he was born in 1891, he died at 25 years old. And this is the age inscribed on the memorial. And we also got the Heimatsort. The place of origin as Britsko. So now we know that Britsvi used to be called Britsko. Back to the database, just input Heimatort Britsko and we should find them all. Easy. Only this guy shows up. Back to square one. Needless to say, I felt very Austro-Hungarian repeating the same method three times in a row and always confidently expecting a different result. Then I thought that maybe finding out more about his unit would help identify the others. This is a map of Austria-Hungary 1914, and you can kind of see all the modern-day states that stemmed out from it. For example, what is now the Czech Republic is in fact the two regions of Bohemia and Moravia. Then I looked through this awesome website called My Czech Roots. I went through all the units and looked for the ones that had their recruitment districts the closest to Britsby. I also knew that Britsby being just east of Prague would be located in Bohemia. So I already knew that what I was looking for was Bohemian regiments. Two regiments stood out to me. The recruitment districts of Kaslav and Prague. So if the men on the memorial actually fought for Austria-Hungary, they would be part of either the Cook Bohemian Infantry Regiment No. 21, Oh yeah, by the way, I forgot to tell you, Cook is an acronym that stands for Kaiserlich und Königlich, Imperial and Royal. And the other one was the Cook Bohemian Regiment number 28. Also, it's not shocking that both regiments were majority Czech, and by a wide margin, one with 87% and the other one with 95%. But that wasn't the case for all Bohemian regiments. For example, Infantry Regiment No. 42 was 86% German, or No. 74 that was essentially one-third German and two-thirds Czech. Again, the clue is where the recruitment center was located. That's because a significant number of the people that lived in modern-day Czech Republic were ethnically German, and that would remain so until the end of World War II. There was another thing that I thought was very interesting. As you can see, these are pretty old regiments, created in 1698 and 1733. For example, Infantry Regiment No. 28 participated in battles like the Siege of Belgrade with Prince Eugene. They defeated Frederick the Great in their homeland at Colin, fought the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic forces nine times, and even defeated the Italians at Costosa in 1866. This is also a reminder that Czechs were part of the Austrian Empire or the Habsburg monarchy for a very long time. Fighting for Vienna was rooted in tradition. But still, it didn't make sense that his unit was Infantry Regiment 76 and it's not in any of the Bohemian or even Moravian regiments. I thought maybe it was a typo. Turns out, Infantry Regiment number 76 is actually from Oedenburg or as it's known today, Sopron, a Hungarian city located right at the border with Austria. Sopron, or as it used to be, Oedenburg, is one of four Hungarian counties that were majority ethnically German. And this is confirmed by the ethnic composition of the regiment. 54% Germans, 39% Magyaren, or Hungarians, and 7% Zonstige, or others. What I learned is that during World War I, the Austro-Hungarian army had a rule that every regiment could have a maximum of three nationalities. So in Regiment 76, we already have German, then we have Hungarian, the 7% remaining were most likely Czech, and our friend Stepan Josef was among them. I wondered what did it feel like for a Czech recruit from a small village named Britsvi to end up in an ethnically German-Hungarian regiment. 
to understand orders from his officers. Our friend Stepan Josef would have had to learn German and perhaps even some Hungarian, a completely different language. When I went to Budapest, I quickly realized that Hungarian was close to no other European language I knew. The lack of mutual intelligibility between speakers of Hungarian and German often led to a feeling of resentment by the other ethnic groups. What made things bad is that at the beginning of the war, the regiments were relatively uniform in ethnic composition. And like we said with the max of three nationalities. However, as the war went on, the Austrian command changed the way they replenished units and regiments suddenly had many more nationalities. So you can imagine the chaos. Even worse, after the first campaigns, there were enormous losses in the ranks of active duty officers. Their positions were then replaced by reserve officers who mainly spoke German and often did not know the language of the men they were leading to battle. For example, there was this story I read where a Czech officer ended up in command of a Ruthenian machine gun company. Ruthenian was the old name for Ukrainians. And of course, he did not know how to speak Ruthenian. They had to resort to sort of kind of German and lots of gimmicks. As you can imagine, this led to a lot of ethnic battalions to rebel against this lack of organization. Honestly, things just get worse for the Austro-Hungarian army. Since the officers only spoke German, it was nearly impossible for these officers to uncover plots or plans for desertion or rebellions. Their men didn't even have to plan all this in secret. And for this reason, by 1916, the Austrian command mostly relied on German and Hungarian regiments as combat units, as they were regarded as more loyal. But like we just saw, it wasn't only loyalty, but it was simply because these were the two languages that officers could speak. Looking through the database in Vienna. Okay, let's go back to the quest to find the 16 other guys. As you've seen, Britzvi wasn't called like that a hundred years ago. It was spelled either as Britzko or more commonly as Bristuf and always as part of Bezirk Böhm Brot. Bezirk means region and Böhm Brot is modern day Chesky Brot. Since we're talking about casualties, I stumbled upon this graph that shows the daily losses of the Austrian army. The country officially lost an astounding 1,460,000 military fatalities from 1914 to 1918. And on this graph, you can see some peaks of casualties, which self-evidently shows major battles in which the Austro-Hungarian army participated. The number of Czech men mobilized by the Austro-Hungarian Imperial Army is estimated at 1.4 million, of which about 140,000 soldiers were killed. It's certainly significant, one in 10. But is the myth true that Czech soldiers were used by the Austrian command as cannon fodder. Is that why they have a bad reputation in terms of combat capabilities? Is it why they surrendered or deserted more than the others, like Austrians claim? In 1906, out of every 1,000 enlisted men, there were 267 Germans, 223 Hungarians, 135 Czechs, 85 Poles, 81 Ukrainians, 67 Croats and Serbs. Great idea to combine them together absolutely no flaw. 64 Romanians, 38 Slovaks, 26 Slovens, and 14 Italians. <laughs> Damn, looks like 23 me results. So like you just saw, Czechs made up roughly 13.5% of all enlisted men. Yet they suffered 9.5% of all Austro-Hungarian losses. Using the simple proportion, Czechs don't seem to be overrepresented in terms of fatalities. In fact, Czech lands belong to the most industrialized parts of the country. Nearly 80% of all factories of Austria-Hungary were located in what would become Czechoslovakia. That means that many Czechs had very technical professions. Many simply stayed behind during the war and worked as factory workers. Others were in the Navy, as engineers, artillerymen for the turrets of the ships. Overall, a huge number of specialized places. Sneaky sneaky, what I didn't tell you is that out of the 140,000 killed, 45,000 died in prison camps mostly in Russia. Perhaps that could explain the bad reputation for desertion. At first glance, one in three Czech fatality died in captivity. That seems to be a lot. Question is, did Czechs surrender a lot? Maybe, 
Did they surrender more than the others? Truth is, early on in the war, Czech men felt like it was a manly, patriotic duty to serve and fight for Vienna. Czech historians claimed that their military performance was very good and they withstood the strictest standards from the Austrian commanders. But once rumors and reports of heavy losses spread through the army, it affected the morale of the new regiments mounting to the front. At the same time, Czechs had sympathies for Russia, so it was okay to surrender to the Russians. However, Italy was a traditional enemy. Their fathers and grandfathers fought against the Italians whether in 1848, 1859 or even in 1866. So the Czechs did not find it strange or immoral to fight the Italians. In fact, they quite enjoyed it. The Czechoslovak Legion the discussion about prison camps inevitably leads to the famous Czechoslovak Legion, whose members were recruited as former emigrants, prisoners of war, or deserters. The number of officially recognized legionnaires was stated as 90,000, of whom 5,500 lost their lives. Statistically speaking, at least one of the 17 names on the memorial could have been part of the Czechoslovak Legion. Czech immigrants in Russia quickly pushed the Russian government to create a Czech legion by recruiting Bohemian, Moravian and Slovakians from the prisoners of war camps. In my veterans book, which you can find on my website in the description below, there is an interesting encounter between a German POW and Czech prisoners. Here's what he said. Czechs hated everyone that spoke German and would often spy for the Russian guards. They hated fighting for Austria-Hungary so much that apparently the entire Czech regiment marched chanting over the trenches and surrendered to the Russians. I always thought that this was just a story, but it could very well be that the regiment he's talking about is our beloved infantry regiment number 28. According to the regiment's archives, on April 1915, somewhere in the Carpathians, after suffering heavy losses and with no supplies left, it is said that most of the regiment's members deserted to the Russian side to the sound of the regiment's marching band. It's exactly the same story. And this event allowed the Austro-Hungarian command to blame their military blunders on Slav units like the Czechs for their so-called affinity with the Russians. What's important to understand is that not all Czechoslovaks joined the legion for patriotic reasons. The majority only wanted to escape to get away from the harsh conditions in prison camps. The cold, the bad food, disease. Overall, one in five prisoners died in Russian POW camps. It is believed that 450,000 Austro-Hungarian prisoners perished. 385,000 died in Russian captivity alone. We see that overall, 30% of Austro-Hungarian soldiers died in prison camps compared to 32% of Czechs. A very slight difference. As you can imagine, many simply joined the Czechoslovak Legion just to get some food and some warm clothes. In the end, 6.5% of all Czech soldiers fought for their former enemies. It is said that 50 to 60,000 legionaries fought for Russia, 15,000 for Italy, but also 10,000 Czechoslovaks fought in France, mainly as part as the French Foreign Legion, which is at the root of the name the Czechoslovak Legion. And there's also this noteworthy event. On July 2nd, 1917, at the Battle of Zborov, the Czechoslovak Legion attacked trenches defended by fellow Czechs. Of the 35th Infantry Regiment from Pilsen and the 75th Infantry Regiment from Jindrychov Hadrek, not surprisingly, the Czechoslovak Legion won the battle and captured 4,000 Austro-Hungarian soldiers. Anyway, eventually I stumbled on a database with the names of all members of the Czechoslovak Legion. And this time it was easy, I simply had to input the modern day village of Britzvi and I found out that 12 legionnaires originated from the village. And yes, one of the 17 names inscribed on the memorial actually fought and died among the Czechoslovak Legion. We're talking about Kaza Fran. I always thought it was for Franz, and I could never find anyone by that name. But in reality, it was Frantisek, probably the Czech version. He was born in 1894. He was captured after suffering from an injury on the 25th of July 1916, near Beresteko in Galicia. This coincides precisely with the famous Brusilov Offensive. Beresteko is located between Brody and Lutsk and fits perfectly on the line of contact mid-July 1916. After a year in a POW camp, he enlisted in the Czechoslovak Legion in Jetomir on September 5, 1917. 
and sadly he was KIA two months later on the 15th of November 1917. Exactly one week after the Bolsheviks stormed the Winter Palace, perhaps it was related to that event. Tension could have mounted between Czechoslovaks and their Russian counterparts. Perhaps it was not related at all. What is certain is that news of his death only came after the war. And just like inscribed on the memorial, he would have celebrated his 24th birthday in 1918. Now back to the memorial. In the end, using the old name of Bristuf, I found 11 names in the Austrian database. Now, interestingly enough, not all the KIA marked in the lists are on the memorial. And not all the KIA from the memorial are in the list. As we've seen before, about 140,000 Czechs from both Bohemia and Moravia were killed during the war. But after going through Austrian archives, I 100% understand why they lost the war. They're not organized at all. Okay, so after the war, around 1918, they collected data about all the casualties. But not only are villages and towns written with different spelling, they couldn't even put fatalities in one category, but three. Tod, Gefallen and Gestorben, aka Dead, Fallen and Deceased. And the names on the memorial are not even in alphabetical order. This is tricking me. In the end, in the Austrian archives, you can see that 64,000 deaths were reported as part of Bohemia and 25,000 as part of Moravia. That means that only 89,000 Czech soldiers are marked as dead in the database out of the 140,000. One explanation could be that since the list of casualties was made in 1919, by that time, a lot of the Austrian prisoners of war from Russia had not yet returned home. For example, in my book, there's an Austrian prisoner of war. It took him one year and a half to get back to Vienna. Anyway, if they had died in captivity, nobody would have known until then. Final results. In the end, here are the soldiers I found from the memorial. There is Kaza Frantisek from the Czechoslovak Legion. There is Stepan Josef from the Infantry Regiment 76. But then it gets interesting. Boris Josef died at 20 years old in November 1917. This seems to mark the 12th Battle of the Isonzo, also known as the Battle of Caporetto, as part of Infantry Regiment 76. Again! So we have two Czech guys from the same random village in the same random Hungarian regiment. That probably means that the recruits from the village of Britzbe were somehow part of a unit attached to this Hungarian regiment from Udenburg. Now the next one is Burish, Alois, perhaps the uncle or even the father of Josef. What was interesting with him is that he's the only one I found in both the Austrian database and the one of the Czechoslovak Legion. Austrian archives revealed that he was part of a logistics unit attached to Field Hospital No. 26, whereas the Czechoslovak Legion got the age of death right, but claimed that he died in an epidemic hospital in Lemberg. Austrians believe that he died on the 23rd of October 1917, whereas the Czechoslovak Legion claims he died on the 23rd of December 1917. Then I found Veseli Franz. He was wounded on the 12th of July 1916, most likely the Brusilov offensive again, but then died in 1918, maybe from wounds, maybe he returned to the front, maybe from disease, I don't know. But what was interesting with him is that he was part of a completely different unit, the KKL Infantry Regiment No. 10. KKL stands for, get ready, Kaiserliche Königliche Landwehr, aka the Austrian Reserve. And the last one is on the memorial as Kefort Vak. I couldn't find anyone with a similar name in the Austrian archives. I had given up on him until I found that one of the legionnaires from the village of Bristuf was named Kefort Venkcheslaus. Vak, Venk, it's pretty close. Not only do they have a very similar name, they're from the same village and both marked as KIA at the same age, probably the same guy. So he died at 22 on the 22nd of March, 1918. And before joining the Legion, we know that his previous unit in the Austro-Hungarian army was KKL number 10, just like his buddy Veseli Franz. So we can say that the Czech soldiers from the village of Bristev were part of two Austro-Hungarian units, Infantry Regiment 76 or Landwehr Regiment number 10. 
However, for the others, I couldn't gather enough information to confirm if it was them or not. Fun fact, one of the names on the memorial is Snajder. That's exactly how I pronounced it in my mind. It's actually the Czech version of Schneider, a very German name. I can bet it's pronounced Schneider. But again, this is a question. Was he Czech or was he German? Was he both? I don't know. There were also others that were maybe identified. Kafka Yar. I love it that they always cut the first name just to make it even harder to identify. Long live the Austro-Hungarians. Yar is for Jaroslaus. So I found one guy called Jaroslaus Kafka, but he wasn't from Britsev, but from a village called Pecek, but it's still in the same region. However, unlike the others, he was in a Czech unit, Infantry Regiment number 36. He died on the 15th of February 1916, somewhere on the Eastern Front. He was 30 years old, but on the memorial, the guy with the similar name died at 28. Perhaps he was 28 when he joined in 1914. Maybe it's him, maybe it's far-fetched and it's not him. In the end, it's very hard because there's problems with the database, but also People moved around from one village to another. They did not necessarily live in the same village where they were born. So that messes up a bit all the data. Again, I want to thank Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this massive research project. I want to thank Bald and Bancroft for exploring these unknown places around the world. Hope you enjoyed my analysis. Let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And of course, if you want to help me create more of these videos, make sure to help me on Patreon or on PayPal. The link is in the description.